Now, in a world of CGI and animation, you could be forgiven for thinking that the humble film prop is a thing of the past. You could. You very much could. Well, as the mighty Warner Brothers celebrate their 90th birthday, Alex Riley discovers that the business of prop making is still going strong. I was nowhere near as comfy as they promised me. In the last 90 years, Warner Brothers Studios have produced some of the most iconic films of all time. Now that was definitely worth getting out of a coffin for. Today I've been given special access to the biggest working film studio in the UK to look at an often overlooked part of the feature film, the props, the sets and the special effects. So John, you created all the special effects in this room. Um, well, all the things that operate we, we created, I mean we, we built them for the first Harry Potter film. Why do you think it's important to have real props as opposed to computer-generated props? It gives the actor something to interact to. The actor's standing here and the carrot's chopping. You, you get an interaction with that. Secondly, reality. If you CGI everything, as good as these guys are, it looks CGI'd a lot of the time. Of course, many films are based around books or comics. So how do you go about designing sets and props for a film that the audience have already read about? Take this for example. This is the Wonka bar from Tim Burton's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Uh, now, so many people have read the Roald Dahl book. They all had an idea of what the greatest chocolate bar in the world should look like. And somebody actually had to make it and get it on the screen. It's my candy bar and I'll do what I want with it. Now these are newspapers from the Dark Knight movies. Um, you don't see a huge amount of them in films, but, you know, people went to a lot of trouble to mock up these newspapers. But you know what? It's really interesting. For example, there's a story here, scientists at CERN trap antimatter for 16 minutes, which is, you know, great fun. But actually, they have written an entire article about that. The key about props to me as, as a movie lover is that it can't be too distracting on the whole. These things just have to blend in. But then, of course, some props are there to be noticed. Some props are there to really make your jaw drop. <laughs> This is the bat pod, <laughs> yes. It's not about blending in. This is about being really, really exciting. There's no windscreen on it. Today, props like the bat pod seem futuristic, but the past decades have taken cinema through a technical revolution. Here at Keeley Hire, they've been building props for over 40 years. We house a few million props. We make props and we also repair props. Our clients come from production companies worldwide. We will look at drawings and work out the scale of these items, concentrate on the periods of the production and look at all the different sets that uh, are, are required. There doesn't seem to be any other country that houses as many prop suppliers as this industry. And also the talent of the crews here is absolutely amazing. This is the Gringot Vault door from the first of the Harry Potter films. Strangely enough, it's, it's actually designed on a real medieval door. In another ten years, will we see less and less of this kind of prop? Um, I'm afraid we might. There are a number of us fighting to do as much for real as, as we can. Do the, the, the bits in CGI that are impossible to do for real, but you get out of it a film that has a reality and a bite that is much better. In the magical world of film, anything is possible. And that's down to the men and women who spend their time creating ever bigger and better sets, props and special effects. Now, Mustache, I've got to catch the Joker. <laughs> Alex Riley, our oversized Harry Potter there. I bet you had a great day, actually. You do? Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, 